Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian, and today is Tutorial Day, because if you're watching this video when it comes out, that means that right around the corner is Adventure Jam 2017. It starts on uh, May 5th, uh, that would be this Friday, and it's where you have uh, two weeks to make your own adventure game. And I've made a couple of Adventure Game Studio tutorial videos in the past, and uh, they are actually kind of surprisingly uh, the most viewed uh, videos on my channel, uh, but they're kind of long and rambly. So I figured I would use this week to sort of gear you up to go off and make your own adventure game in Adventure Game Studio and perchance partake in Adventure Jam 2017, but do them kind of fast and snappy to sort of get you speeding, get you moving along. I'm going to show you how to do a normal sort of third person Sierra Lucas Artsy type point and clicky deal in Adventure Game Studio. And on Thursday, I'm going to show you how to do a first person missed seventh guest dish type adventure game. Now we're going to start the Adventure Game Studio Editor and the first thing we're going to do is click start a new game and go through the wizardy thing here and what we're going to use is this uh, preset here called BASS. Now that's basically the uh, Wadget Eye Games uh, Beneath the Steel Sky type thing where you do something with the left mouse button and examine something with the right mouse button. This cuts down tremendously on the amount of writing you're going to do for your game and you only have two weeks to do it so the less writing the better now i've actually taken the liberty of pre-baking a little adventure game that i'm gonna go through in some small detail uh, if i hit f5 right now i'm going to that's the test your game button uh, it's gonna load the uh, game that i've made and it's this this is the adventures of jeff and fuckface mcgee and uh, Jeff and Fuckface McGee are stuck inside of Jeff's office. If they want to go through the door, now again, remember, left mouse button does something and right mouse button interacts. If I look at this, it is the door leading outside. I really want to go outside. Me too. Too bad it's locked. If I left click and slowly walk up to the door, Jeff will remark that it is in fact very locked. Actually, the game will. The solution to this is one of the tried and true puzzles of the adventure gaming world that I really, really hope you don't actually put in your game. It is the old newspaper under the door trick. Well, fuck you. So if I put the newspaper under the door here and push the sewing needle through the keyhole, then the key drops onto the newspaper. You pull the newspaper back and retrieve the key. And this means I can now use the key on the door to go outside. Oh boy, I never want to go inside again, and so he can't. Now let's go through this. Uh, first of all, we have got ourselves some sprites. Now, as you saw, we have two characters. We have uh, Buddy, that would be Fuckface McGee, and the, these are all of his sprites. And we have Ego, that would be Jeff. Um, what you actually do is when you go into sprites here, you just right click and quick import the sprites that uh, you've uh, helpfully constructed. Uh, and every sprite, every frame of walking animation and such is a PNG image in and of itself. You just simply import the, um, you know, the images that you need. Now, if you import them and things start looking a bit weird, check under your general settings here. Yes, sir. Because up here is the color depth for the game. Now, if the transparency of your PNGs looks weird, that's probably because uh, your game is in 16-bit and not 32-bit colors. And uh, AGS does start on 16-bit. And here you can also mess with uh, the game's resolution. You can pick uh, whatever you want. Mine runs in, you know, 320 by 200, which is the good old days, the good old uh, Lucas Artsy Sierra days. That was a little aside. Now, once you have uh, imported your sprites for your characters, it is time to assign views to them. And uh, characters need two different views. They need one for standing around and walking, and those are, you know, the same thing. Standing around is just the first frame of an of a walking animation where they don't move. Uh, as you can see here, we have a walking animation going left and a walking animation going right. And the first frame is just, you know, Jeff standing around doing nothing. 
So, and, and then we have a whopping two frames of walking animation following that. Now you'll notice that there is no uh, down or up. That's because I didn't draw them. And if they are not in the game, then AGS will simply use left and right, uh, even if the character is moving up or down. Now, Jeff also needs to talk and I've added uh, two frames of talking animation again for left and right. And uh, the way you actually do this is just to, you know, click create new frame, double click on that and just go into the sprites that you just uploaded uh, and pick, you know, whichever one of these is the talking animation that you want. And uh, if you want to delete a frame that you've accidentally added that you didn't need, you just press delete. And once these uh, views have been defined, they're just animations, they're not actually characters just yet. You go over here to the right and in your characters tab here, you've got Jeff and Fuckface. To create characters or to create new views and create everything, you just uh, right click on, you know, the, uh, the thing here. You right click the thing. By creating a new character, for instance, our main character here, Jeff, uh, he has a number of settings over here that you can dig around with, but the most important of those is his normal view and his speech view. Now, his normal view is set to one, and that corresponds to the little one up here, Jeff walks. And you pick these by, you know, hitting these little three dots over here, and you actually get your, um, um, your little uh, views, the ones you've defined. Cool. So now we've got two characters. Now you also want to place the characters in a room, but first you have to define the room that they're going to start in. So if we just, you know, unfold this, we've got uh, his office and we've got the outside room. Now the office, double clicking that and going into edit room shows the office here. Now the office is just a plain, um, JPEG or PNG image is just a flat image. Uh, you insert the image by clicking change. And yes, it is called change even if there's nothing to change. And you just, you know, select the, um, uh, the image that you've created. Now, the um, image that we've got here has the desk and the door. That's all fine. Jeff has to walk, you know, in front of that. But we've also got this couch in the foreground. And as you will notice, uh, Jeff actually moves sort of behind the couch. You can see his feet kind of disappearing here. Now that's called a walk behind. Now, because this is a flat image, uh, the game has to be told, of course, that the couch can be walked around. So from this little room uh, drop downy thing, we have got the walk behinds. And I've actually painted in the couch here. Now, the way you do that is by using these little um, Emma's paint style uh, drawing utensils. I mean, uh, you've got a straight line and you've got a uh, freeform line and anything, basically anything that's colored in, then the character will actually move behind whatever is colored in. Um, once you've actually drawn around the object that they're supposed to walk behind, there is a little uh, line here and this is the baseline. It always starts out at the top of the screen and you're supposed to drag that down to the bottom of the object that you're supposed to walk behind. The reason why you have to, you know, do these uh, baselines is because you could ostensibly have two um, objects or, or, you know, two places in the room where the character has to be able to walk between them. So, uh, for instance, if he was supposed to walk behind the desk here, I've also marked that in as a separate walk behind area. And that has a baseline that just starts, you know, at the bottom of the desk. So if Jeff was able to walk behind the desk, then, you know, once you cross this line here, then the then Adventure Game Studio knows that whatever I've marked out in, you know, green here is what he's supposed to walk behind. Now, how do you make him walk on anything? Well, that is with walkable areas. Now, walkable area, as you can see, is basically just, you know, splotches on the ground. Now, everything that's filled in here is what Jeff can physically walk on. If I were to, for some strange reason, have him be able to walk behind the desk, I would just basically draw a line that goes, you know, around the desk. 
you will see that he is now obscured by the big box that I drew around the desk. Now I didn't go in and, and you know meticulously carve out the little thingamajig here. He's just basically walking behind whatever box I told him to walk behind, which would be this huge box thing right here. So now you've got a character and he's walking around a room. We've also got a different character and that would be Mr. Fuckface. Uh, basically, they both need a starting room in order to actually appear in the game. Uh, so we've got Jeff here. Uh, if we go into his settings and scroll down, you can see that his starting room is in the office. Uh, you can use the drop down here to select either the office or outside. These are the only two rooms we've got. Uh, and his starting coordinates. Now, if you don't remember what coordinates are in the room and how anyone does, I have no idea. It's actually these uh, mouse position coordinates that are right here. And you have to really get good at memorizing because there's no way to actually copy these coordinates. So you basically just have to sort of point the mouse cursor where you want it to go and go 98.146 and then remember that 98.146 and then go in here and then type in those coordinates with start X and start Y. And the same goes for uh, Mr. Fuckface. Now Fuckface uh, starts on the other side of the room. So his coordinates are somewhere over here but he still has a starting room of one and he has the starting coordinates of 277 and 144. So that's somewhere over here. Now, as you noticed, there was a newspaper lying on the floor. Now, the newspaper is actually a separate object that I've inserted into the game. So from the drop down here, we've got objects. Uh, and now to place an object in the room, an object is really a separate PNG image that has been imported into the sprites. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a little folder called in-game objects and I've got a sprite here. I imported that the same way I imported, uh, you know, my character sprites and it's to scale and everything. So it doesn't, you know, mesh weirdly because you can't resize objects once they've been, uh, you know, uh, put in the scene. Uh, to, put, to place an object in the scene, you simply right click anywhere with, uh, you know, object selected from the drop down here. You simply just place an object and then the whole thing goes invisible because, you know, uh, you, we haven't told AGS what object is supposed to be there. So you go over here to the right where uh, it says image and you just basically select the sprite basically your in-game object here, we've got the newspaper here. And you give it a description, uh, that would be a newspaper, and you give it a name. Now the name is what uh, you're gonna be used when you're scripting this stuff. And we're gonna save the scripting for last, but right now um, it's an object, so we start with a little o and call it newspaper. O newspaper. If I want to do something with this newspaper, I have to write some interactions. And the interactions here, uh, because we're only using the two button interface, we only have to do something if you want to interact with it or if you want to look at it. All these others, you know, pick up, talk to, um, are not useful. Use inventory, however, will become useful, but I'll explain that one later. If I interact with the newspaper, then I want Jeff to walk over to it and pick it up. So once I click uh, this little three duddy thing over here, the room script will open up. And this is where you have to start scripting. I'm gonna turn off my face cam for this. There we go. So uh, it's uh, it goes into some, uh, some script here. This entire little block here is what's gonna happen if you click on the newspaper. He is Jeff, who is the player, is going to walk over to these coordinates and take away mouse control from the player so he doesn't, you know, click on something else while we're trying to move over here. He's then going to face the character, Fuckface, his buddy, and say, are you done with this paper? Fuckface is going to say, it's yours, bra. The player is going to say, thanks. And we're going to remove the newspaper from the room, the object itself, that is. So we're just going to say, newspaper are you visible hell no you're not and we're going to add the inventory item newspaper to the player's inventory now what inventory item i hear you say well over here we have also a uh, you know little thingy called inventory items an inventory item needs graphics so again inside you know your sprite thing you've got some inventory items here 
Now the newspaper is uh, <laughs> has a really uh, dumb as description. It should be newspaper. There you go. It has the image that you know I imported here. Now this is a separate image from the object that I put in the game. This has a different size and a different orientation than the inventory item newspaper. It has the description and it also has the name I newspaper, I for inventory. And again, these can have interactions as well. If you look at them, uh, it, they can generate a message. Uh, I didn't write one in. And you can also use other inventory items on the inventory, you know, combining inventory items. I haven't, yet, haven't done any for that either, but uh, it'll all make sense once we're done with this, hopefully. What you need to do is then put it under the door. And the door is, you know, painted into the background, so it's not an object that we put in. It is, in fact, a hotspot. Now, hotspots, hotspots are uh, just basically, again, you draw something, and then that area becomes, uh, you know, something that can be clicked on. Now, if I use the eyedropper here, that lets me switch between whatever objects I've got going. This little baby here is the door. And I've defined that it is, in fact, a door. That's the description. That's the thing that's in the bottom of the, um, you know, the uh, little legend that pops up at the bottom when you hover over an item or an object. And it's got the name H door H for hotspot. And when I go over to actions, I can either interact with the door or I can look at it. Now, if I just try to interact with it, that would imply that I wanted to open the door. So, and, and you know, it's locked from the start of the game. So the player will walk over to these coordinates that's right in front of the door. And if the player has the inventory item, the key, then the game will say, well, you can just unlock the door and go outside. But if the player does not have the key, then, you know, the door is locked and you don't have the key, so you can't unlock it. With this door, we have to do two things. We have to put the newspaper under it and we have to use the needle on, on it. And this is accomplished by this little ba baby over here. Use inventory on hotspot. Now, here, here's where things get a bit tricky. The player can use several different inventory items on the, uh, uh, the door. I'm just gonna turn off my face cam here because we are playing with scripts. Uh, if the player is trying to use the newspaper, then you walk under, uh, you walk over to the door and you put the newspaper under the door. That's just the player saying that. We take away the newspaper from his inventory because he's now used it. And we set a global variable that says newspaper is under the door. What the hell is a global variable? Well, a global variable is this baby over here. I've basically just set two variables. Either the newspaper is under the door, that can be false or true. And the door is open, that can also be false or true. Uh, and a global variable is basically something that the game can go in and check. And you can set the variable to either false or true, that's called a boolean variable. Or you can set, um, you know, any number of, you know, an integer is a, is a number. So if you had like money in the game, the uh, variable could uh, increase or decrease as the player spends money, whatever. I usually just use the boolean, either something is true or it's false, and that's easy to check for. So what happens is at the start of the game, the initial value of newspaper under door is false because the newspaper is not under the door. But if we use the newspaper on the door, then it will set newspaper on the variable newspaper under door to true. Now, why doesn't it just check if the player has or does not have the newspaper? Well, obviously, if you if it checks for whether the newspaper is in the player's inventory, then at the start of the game, it will think that the newspaper is already under the door, even though it's clearly just lying on the floor. See how that works? With that variable set, you can now use the needle on the door. And the first thing we do is we check if the newspaper is under the door. If it is, then we walk the player over to these coordinates, display this little message that says, you know, you shove the needle in the um, keyhole and all of this stuff. And then we just take away the needle from the player's inventory because they don't need it anymore. 
moving on. Uh, see, what you can also do in the game is uh, walk up to our good little friend here, Fuckface, and engage him in conversation. Very, very slowly. Now this is the uh, last thing I'm going to show you. So far we've uh, covered, uh, you know, how to import a background, how to import an object, how to use a uh, hotspot, uh, and uh, basic, basic scripting. Uh, but you can also engage uh, Mr. Fuckface in conversation, and clicking on him en enables this dialogue tree. And I'm quickly going to show you how to uh, write dialogues. Uh, what you can do is ask him how to get out of the room, and he will say the key is stuck in the lock. And that removes the uh, option that I just picked, how do I get out of the room, and replaces it with, what, you mean the key is stuck in the outside of the door? And once we, uh, you know, select that, it'll just play a different dialogue option, and the last dialogue option here is I'm gonna stop talking to you now and that will exit the dialogue tree. If we go up to dialogues, to the left are the uh, different uh, things that can be asked about in the dialogue tree and uh, this means all of them. So how do I get out of this room and the uh, one that it replaces and the third one which is just you know stop the conversation. And over here is the actual script. You'll see here the uh, at symbol and one. That means everything that goes on here until it goes comes down to this one. That means that's this is all going to happen uh, when the player selects the first dialogue option. Uh, how to write dialogue for the characters? Well, the characters all have you know their individual script names, and you can see over here characters. This guy is named Jeff, this guy is named Fuckface. Ignore the C at the beginning and just type out, you know, Jeff or Fuckface colon and then whatever you want them to say. So that's basically how that works. You basically just write a little movie script down here. And once it gets to the end of that, you can either turn on or off different options. And this is how that uh, little dialogue option gets switched around. Because check over here, you've got dialogue option number one, show and say. Say just means that the character will repeat what the player has just selected, so you know, so it appears over their heads. Uh, show means this dialogue option is visible from the start, you know, when the dialogue is started. And you'll notice that dialogue option number two is not visible at the start. So with this command option on uh, two, I actually turn on this option, so you know, that check mark appears. Uh, and what I also do is I turn off the first option, meaning, you know, how do I get out of this room? That's like uh, turning off this uh, this thing. So that's how you do. And there are a bunch of other commands that you can give during um, uh, dialogues and stuff, but really that's the basic gist of it. To recap, what we have done is uh, create this abomination where um, you <laughs> you do the most awful adventure game puzzle there ever has been. In fact, if if uh, if anyone puts this in their game, uh, me and Richard Cobbett are just gonna come straight leaping out of their screens from our, our Twitters and just bitch slap the hell out of you. We don't want it. So with the um, with this, uh, we can now unlock the uh, door and wish you all a very very good Adventure Jam 2017. When we come back on Thursday, I'll show you how to make a much less complicated graphically uh, game. That would be a first person game where, uh, you know, like Mist or Seventh Guest, where you watch, you know, you view the action from a first person perspective. I hope that made any sense to you. And, uh, you know, if not, then feel free to leave a comment. And, um, you know, I'm not an expert on an adventure game studio by any stretch of the imagination, but I hope this was at least enough to get you started. I know I skimmed over a lot of the details, especially in the scripting phase, but you can freeze frame that shit and just, uh, you know, copy that down. And remember, if you uh, get into some scripting stuff and you go, well, what the hell was that, uh, you know, uh, how the hell do I use this uh, stuff and whatever, you can just, you know, put your cursor on the command and press F1 and that opens the um, context sensitive help. That is it for me. I've already spent, Jesus, I thought I was, I thought there was going to be a quick video and I realized I've now spent like two and a half hours on it. So I'm just going to stop talking right now and let you guys get on with it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday.